A lot of people, when they first try the DCS Spitfire, get a shock at how twitchy the aircraft seems to be and how they will suddenly black out at apparently the smallest inputs from their joystick. I'm going to explain to you why this is happening, why it isn't anything to be necessarily worried about, and how you can resolve this. For this section of the video, I'm going to largely be relying on a document produced by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics in the United States. This was issued in 1942, and it was entitled Measurements of the Flying Qualities of a Spitfire Mark 5A aeroplane. So this is the Mark 5. It is slightly earlier than the Mark 9 that is used in DCS, but for most intents and purposes, it is no different. I'm going to start with a single diagram in this document, which shows the amount of stick movement, which translates into elevator deflection. And this graph shows generally a linear relationship between the two. It's not perfectly linear. I pressed a ruler up against the page and there was an ever so slight curve to it. And it shows that at about zero stick angle, there is about zero deflection. Pushing the stick fully forward to about a 11 degree forward push gives max nose down of about 25 degrees elevator and pulling the stick fully back to about 14 degrees back gives a elevator up of about 31 degrees which is elevator fully back or elevator fully up. You will note that this diagram also makes mention of the length of the control stick from the center of the spade grip, where it is assumed the pilot would mostly be holding the grip, down to the base of the stick itself. This does not include the actual fulcrum point, which probably adds another centimeter or two. The length that is identified in this document is 33 and 7 eighths of an inch. That's about 81 centimeters plus one or two centimeters for the fulcrum. I'm using a length of 83 centimeters for this stick. That will be important in a few moments. It's time now for some triangles. Using the figures for the Spitfire stick in the NACA report, it has a throw to the fully back position of about 14 degrees from the upright position, and the stick itself has a length of 83 centimeters from the fulcrum to the center of the spade grip. This means that the pilot can pull the stick fully back, and that stick will have moved around 21 centimeters at the position where the pilot's hand is. So the pilot can move his hand back through 21 centimeters of distance before the aircraft is in the fully back stick position. For comparison's sake, I've recently measured the physical dimensions of the Warthog joystick, and I measured 15 centimeters from the center of the ball where the joystick rotates up to just above the center of where my hand is on the hand grip. That distance is 15 centimeters, and I also measured the angle back at which the stick would travel, and the distance it traveled where my hand was. I've got a 15.6 degree angle and about 4.11 centimeters of travel. These measurements were measured just with a tape measure, so they might be out by a few mil here and there. The reason it's important to compare the two stick and travel dimensions is going to be explained to you now. This diagram here shows the result of a flight test that was carried out by Naka on the Spitfire. The four graphs together illustrate a short two to three degree change in the elevator angle. And this was input at 208 miles per hour indicated airspeed. The elevator deflection results in approximately 1.8 G. Now, from the previous diagram, we know that there's an almost linear relationship between stick input and 
elevated affliction, where one degree of control stick input results in around two degrees of elevated deflection. So in order to get the 1.8 G load, which resulted from three degrees of elevator movement, this would have required the pilot to move the stick by about 1.5 degrees. In the real Spitfire, this 1.5 degrees represents approximately 10% of the total available stick movement, which is around 14 degrees. So in other words, this represented a two centimeter movement in the real stick. Now translating that into a PC joystick such as the Warthog, this would be just four millimeters of movement for a 1.8 G maneuver. So you can hopefully now see why a properly modelled Spitfire should be almost impossible to fly on a typical PC joystick. And that is why it does, and why it should, feel so unbelievably twitchy. Assuming you have a default control setup. That brings us to the next question, is what can you do about this twitchiness to make it more flyable, either with the hardware you've got, or with some hardware adjustments. The cheapest way to tackle this issue is normally via the control inputs in your sim. And we're going to look at curves in particular for the pitch axis. In DCS, I've just gone to the axis commands and there's the pitch control for the Spitfire. Selecting my joystick input, I then select axis tune. That brings up this panel here. Now this is where I can set the curves and you can see on screen here this is a very aggressive curve. The normal curve looks like this. It's a linear curve which looks very similar to the NACA graph of the Spitfire. Now what you can do is add this bottom one, this curvature one here to begin with, and that will make the small movements of your joystick input near to the center produce much finer inputs on the actual control. So you'll have much finer control about the center. The downside to this is that as you get towards the extremes of your push or pull on your stick, you get this almost exponential increase in control surface movement. And then once you get past about um, half of your input, things can get away on you very quickly. Another option is also to drag down the Y saturation. This is something I do as well. And I typically have had it at about 60 when I was using the Warthog joystick. So my curve looked something like this. Bringing the Y saturation will reduce the chance that you will over pitch the aircraft by accidentally putting too much in. When you're getting towards the end of your joystick input range, you won't get these massive deflections on the elevator surface. The downside to this then is that you're actually sacrificing some of your maximum deflection. Now I almost never need maximum elevator deflection in the Spitfire. I can get away with a curve that's way down at about 47 to 50 on the Y saturation and I can still turn very well and I have good handling of the aircraft with my hardware. My suggestion for playing with this is to start off by bringing everything right down. So bring the curvature up to about, I don't know, 60 or so, bring the Y situation right down to quite a low number, say 30, get a feel for the aircraft with that extreme curve, and then start dialing it back to somewhere closer to what it is by default, and get a feel for where the best curve is for you and your hardware. The other way to tackle this problem is to get an extension for your joystick to try and physically change the hardware itself so it better maps to the real thing. This is actually an incredibly common practice. A lot of people do this, and I have a 20 centimeter extension on my joystick, and in the past I've used 12 centimeter extensions. There are extensions that go all the way out to the actual 
historical lengths of these joystick and control columns. People build their own and there are plenty of websites online you can search for joystick extensions for homemade options and most of the manufacturers of the customizable joysticks will also have links to manufacturers of extensions that you can buy. Now the extensions that you buy can range between about 20 and 100 euros. They can be quite pricey and a lot of people that have their own tools um, available perhaps in their shed or what have you find they can make these things much, much, much cheaper than you can buy them for online. However, if you don't own all of those tools or have access to someone who does own the tools, then you can shell out some cash and order one of these extensions for your joystick. Doing a mix of the extension and the saturation on your curves is also an option, but once you tackle this problem of the control inputs for the DCS Spitfire and in fact for a number of other aircraft in a number of other sims, it can vastly improve your flying experience. So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully that explains a little bit about what's going on with the so-called twitchiness in the DCS Spitfire and I hope that this helps some people resolve their control issues.